Hello and welcome to Train Signal. You're watching Managing Multiple Backup Servers with Veeam Enterprise Manager. In this lesson, we'll start off by talking about what Veeam Enterprise Manager is. Why should you be interested in Veeam Enterprise Manager? What's it going to do for you? From there, I'll show you how to install Veeam Enterprise Manager, how to add your Veeam Backup Servers to Enterprise Manager, and then finally, how to view consolidated backup data using Veeam Enterprise Manager. And with that, let's get started. So of course you've heard of Veeam Backup and Replication, but what is Veeam Enterprise Manager? Well, Veeam Enterprise Manager is included with Veeam Backup and Replication at no additional charge, and it's used to manage multiple Veeam Backup servers. So think of it as a centralized management server for all of your Veeam Backup servers. It provides both management and reporting from a single web console, as well as a single view of backup jobs, reports, and email status across all your Veeam Backup servers. So some possible uses might be, perhaps you have multiple branch servers that run Veeam Backup and they have multiple vSphere virtual infrastructures out there that you're trying to back up. You could have this consolidated view of all your Veeam Backup servers using Veeam Enterprise Manager. Maybe you need to delegate recoveries out to different administrator groups. Maybe you have an Exchange server group and they have their own Veeam Backup server. And maybe you have a Windows Active Directory group and they have their own Veeam Backup server. You could use Enterprise Manager and set up user roles and delegate the administration of those Veeam Backup servers. Or perhaps you have just multiple Veeam Backup servers out there to distribute the backup load. Maybe you have so many virtual machines that you want to back up and you're trying to prevent IO contention. So you create multiple Veeam Backup servers that run multiple jobs to get all those virtual machines backed up. Well, you could manage all those Veeam Backup servers with Veeam Enterprise Manager. So let me show you what this application is, where you get it, how to install it, and how to configure it. Here we are on a virtual machine. It's a Windows 2008 64-bit virtual machine. And what I've done is I've browsed to the folder where I extracted the Veeam backup files that I downloaded from Veeam.com. And in this folder, the same folder where I ran the Veeam backup setup, what I'm going to do now is to run Veeam backup enterprise manager setup. So it's a 158 megabyte installation file. What I'll do is I'll just double click that. And this brings up the installation wizard for Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager. I'll just go down here and click Next. We'll accept the license agreement and say Next. And then here you can see that we're installing Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager server and the Enterprise Manager website. I'll just take the defaults here and say Next. And then on this server, we'll be installing a new instance of SQL Server Express that's included with Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager. You could install this on a server that already had SQL Express, like your Veeam Backup Server, and in that case, you'd use an existing instance. But in our case, this is a fresh new install of SQL Express. I'll say Next here. Now we're asked for the service credentials, which in this case should be the local administrator account. The default administrator account is there. I'll just type in the password for that and say Next. Now we're told that the name of the website will be Veeam Backup inside IIS, our local web server. The HTTP port will be 9080 and HTTPS is 9443. I'll say Next here. And with that we can start the installation. I'll just click Install. And it'll take just a minute to install SQL Express and Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager. So I'll pause the video recording and be right back. Okay, the installation of Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager is completed. I'll say finish here. Let's close out this window. And now we see on our desktop Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager right there. I'll double click that. This brings up our web browser and a login prompt. I'll log in with the local administrator account, which by default has access. And here we go, this is Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager. And the first thing that we need to do with this new installation is to add a Veeam Backup Server. It needs to connect to those Veeam Backup Servers to pull data in, to get alerts, or to send job updates back. So let's go into Configuration. And by default here we're on our Backup Servers, and the first thing we need to do is to go over here and click Add. So what we're going to add is our primary backup server, which is Veeam backup. We'll say that this is the primary Veeam backup server for Wirebrain Coffee. We'll use these credentials. And 
and I'll say OK. And now let's add our secondary backup server. I'll click Add here, and it's called W2008R2-1. We'll call this Secondary VBU Server for Wirebrain Coffee. I'll use these credentials. The administrator account on the local system and say OK. From here, let's go over to the last 24 hours tab. And you can see a summary here, and we now have data. You can see uh, backup servers, the number is 2. Let's click on that 2. And we can see that Veeam backup uh, server status is OK. And uh, the secondary backup server, so far it hasn't processed a job. And that's just because it's a brand new server, but we are communicating with it. We'll go back to the dashboard here, and let's explore this a little bit and learn about what Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager can offer. The first thing I noticed down here is the throughput. This chart right here is showing us the throughput in megabytes per second for our two backup servers. So over here you can see that some backups kicked off around 10 p.m. last night and then a new backup kicked off right here. We can also see the new server. I just recently kicked off a backup job on it and you can see there's a little blue line right there showing us that the backup job just recently kicked in and it's doing a backup. There's information up here underneath the summary, the number of backup servers we have, the number of jobs, the number of virtual machines that are being backed up, number of templates being backed up, uh, the processing speed, the source virtual machine size in total, the backup size in total, and the compression ratio that we're getting. We can see what's happened in the last 24 hours, number of jobs that have run, the successes, warnings, and errors. So if there were some warnings or errors, we could just click on these right here. These are hyperlinks and very quickly check out what the warnings or errors were, not just on a single backup server, but multiple Veeam backup servers across your enterprise. So this is the last 24 hours at a glance. You can click refresh right here, and we have a little bit more updated data. If we go to the last seven days, we can see what's been happening over the last seven days. This is a real quick and easy way to get a quick picture of when the backups are happening and how much throughput they're taking. For example, we could see here every night, and I can tell you it's around 10 o'clock, backups kick off. You can see a very predictable graph right here. You see every night around the same time, these backup jobs kick off on the same backup server. Here we can see an error happened within the last seven days. We can quickly click on that and see that this backup job failed. We could click on the backup job and very quickly we see there there's the backup job that failed. If I click on that, here I get more details, actually a report on the backup job. I can see uh, which servers failed. Here's the servers that failed. I can click on the server, scroll down here and see that the client error was that the specified transports weren't available. That was the first backup job we ran using the new Veeam backup and we know what happened. We didn't fully take into account the different transports that were available for local machines versus virtual machines that were stored on the storage area network. We can go to the virtual machines tab here and we can see the virtual machines out there that are being backed up, what server they're being backed up by, the name of the job, the number of restore points that were available, the file path. We can even export this to Excel if we wanted to. We can do a quick search here. We could find any virtual machine that starts with a keyword like Veeam. We could click on the restore points and see what restore points are available for that particular virtual machine. Let's look in a little more detail at the reports tab. And basically how it works is you can click on individual backup servers, a particular job, and then you can click on that job and you can see the current status of that job. In the case of this job, the job is currently running. You can see the performance rate, the amount of data that's been transferred. If we go back, let's look at this other backup server and we can click on a backup job that actually succeeded and there again we see the success and performance of those backup jobs. Click on a job, get job details up here, how long the job took, Get overall job details. This is the job log. You can see which virtual machines were backed up and how much data was being backed up and if the job finished successfully or if each virtual machine finished successfully. Then down here you can click on the virtual machine. You can see the performance rate and the amount of data that was transferred, the status for that virtual machine. 
and really what's been going on in the backup job for this particular virtual machine. If you go into configuration, similar to Veeam Reporter, you can go in here and you can configure roles, particular roles for Veeam Enterprise Manager. For example, I talked about how you might have groups of administrators that just monitor particular types of servers. Maybe you want to make a role for Exchange Virtual Machine Administrators and every Exchange admin would be a member of that group and then that group would have a role on the portal and they could administer the backups for just the Exchange Virtual Machines or just the jobs that affected the Exchange Virtual Machines. Just a simple example of how roles might be used inside Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager. You can go to notifications here and you can configure an SMTP server and configure it to send notifications at certain points in time or when a particular number of errors happen within a time period. Alright, so this is Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager, a centralized reporting and alerting console for your Veeam Backup infrastructure. It shows you what's going on across all Veeam Backup servers, across all backup jobs, and all virtual machines that are being backed up. It provides reports and email alerts if any sort of alert happens in the Veeam Backup infrastructure. It's included with Veeam Backup and it's ideal for monitoring and managing multiple Veeam Backup servers across your virtual infrastructure. And that brings us to the end of this lesson, so let's summarize what we've learned. We started off by talking about what Veeam Enterprise Manager is. You found out that it's a free, centralized portal for Veeam Backup consoles. In other words, it's a web-based console that allows you and other administrators in your virtual infrastructure to get a consolidated picture of what's going on across all the Veeam Backup consoles, across all the Veeam Backup appliances. And there's a number of different case scenarios where Enterprise Manager can help out, especially if you want to delegate out backup administration for certain types of virtual machines, or perhaps you have multiple remote locations and you need a consolidated picture of what's going on in the backup infrastructure. I showed you how to install Veeam Enterprise Manager. You saw that it's a single executable that's included inside the Veeam backup and replication zip file that you downloaded from veeam.com. We just ran that executable it installed SQL Express if you don't already have a SQL database and then you were able to run Veeam Enterprise Manager over the web. Once we logged into Veeam Enterprise Manager we added our backup servers to the Enterprise Manager console and then we were able to see what's going on across the backup infrastructure. You saw the different backup jobs that were created, which backup jobs were running, the bandwidth that was being utilized by the various backup jobs across time. And you also saw how you were able to get a history of what's going on with the different backup jobs for various periods of time. And we concluded the video with a tour of Veeam Enterprise Manager, how you configure it, how you could create email notifications and delegate out administrative privileges. So that brings us to the end of this video covering Veeam Enterprise Manager. Thanks for watching.